Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marie Levison, and I am the Deputy Director of the Space ISAC. Unfortunately, Gretchen Bliss is not able to join us today, but I want to acknowledge that she is a pivotal and integral part of the workforce development initiatives between UCCS and Space ISAC. It is my honor to introduce our final session of the day, I hope everyone is still awake, um, an interview with our amazing Space ISAC fellows. Through the Watch Center Fellows Program, our in incredible Space ISAC team is building a diverse talent pipeline that provides hands-on operational experience, innovative partnerships, and a framework for more education, understanding, and awareness of cyber threats to the space community. We are thrilled to be able to offer this unique opportunity to our Space ISAC members, our partners, and our students who come to us from a variety of backgrounds and experience levels. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Ms. Bernadette Maisel, our Space ISAC Workforce Development Director, Ms. Lydia Serum-Dane with Periton, and Mr. Xavier Foster, a student with UCCS. Okay. Whoops. All right. Mic check. Okay. Check, check. Okay. Mic check. We're good. It's the end of the day. There's bound to be something, right? <laughs> okay, so let's actually get this started. I am going to start off here with a question for Xavier. Um, as a UCCS student, can you tell me what inspired you to pursue a path in cybersecurity for space? Thanks for the question, Marie. So, first of all, my background's in mechanical engineering. Um, mostly regarding military aircraft and whatnot. So, but I do have family and friends that work in cyber and the genuine curiosity, you know, just merging the two worlds, you know, I have design, CAD, manufacturing, you know, lean methodologies, those are all cool, right? But um, having the general baseline knowledge and impact of cyber, I knew there was more to it and I just kind of had that innate curiosity about it, you know, just wanting something more within that industry and whatnot. So um, yeah, that led me to explore cyber deeper, more deeply. And um, yeah, just learning to bridge the gap. I wanna try to, you know, unite the two sectors and make my contrib contributions in that regard, so yeah. I love that, thank you. Learning to bridge the gap, that's a great way to put it. Um, Lydia, I'm going to ask you the same question. Uh, you're an orbital systems engineer with Periton. Can you tell me a little bit about what inspired you to pursue a path in cybersecurity for space? Uh, yeah, so I've always known that I wanted to pursue a career that was both exciting and challenging. For me, that was cybersecurity. Um, and since I can remember, I've always had a deep passion and interest in space. And so seeing as um, we've kind of entered a new modern day space race, um, I saw a really unique opportunity to combine those two, my experience in cybersecurity and my passion for space. And that's how I landed my current role. So really excited. All right. Well, Xavier, you have been with us since March, which I can't believe, just when we announced IOC of our Watch Center. So tell right. me, what specific projects or initiatives have you been involved in during your fellowship, and how has that changed your career trajectory? Sure, well, to start, so I made some contributions to our daily and weekly and monthly reporting in this ISAC, um, and just gaining that deeper insight and knowledge kind of led me down, you know, the path down, you know, kind of building in security into whether it be hardware, software, and whatnot. So, um, and being involved in ISAC, you know, we're in an ecosystem with, you know, XI and the NCC and other small business members that we have, such as Proof Labs, and that kind of, shout out to Dick Wilkinson if he's in here. Um, he's kind of showed me, you know, some solutions, you know, kind of how those two worlds merge is with regards to like engineering and cyber. So. Um, that's kind of where my career interests lie at the moment, if that answers your question. Yeah, that's great. I know you do contribute a lot to those products that we produce, like the Secure Space Daily, so thank you. 
All right, Lydia, tell me what projects have you been involved in during your fellowship? I know one that comes to mind for me is the Threat Actor Matrix. Tell us a little bit more about that and how has that changed some of your perspectives? Um, I would actually say the same thing. That one comes to mind as well for me. Um, so I had the opportunity to establish um, our Threat Actor Matrix tool. Um, it's something that the analysts at the Watch Center can utilize to identify threat actors, um, describe attributes, motivations, um, document tactics. I mean, th those are just to name a few, but it's really dynamic and it can be tailored to our needs. And as an operational Watch Center, faced with a growing, quickly evolving you know, threat landscape, I think that's crucial. It's something I'm really proud of and, and excited about. And it's really made me realize that as long as you have initiative and you know, you're creative, there's always something you can contribute to the team that you guys can use to um, accomplish the mission. Amazing, yes. Initiative and creativity, you bring so much of that to the table. It's amazing, Lydia. Um, so on to our next question. As we all know, space systems are becoming increasingly interconnected and reliant on technology. So Xavier, I'm going to put this to you first. From your experience as a Space ISAC fellow, have you learned more about the intersection of cyber and space? Absolutely. Um, just given the nature of the program and how the Watch Center is set up, kind of like in a SOC style, you know, we have different cells. Um, but the cells are organized corresponding to the different, um, I guess you could say sectors, so space, signals, terrestrial layer, cyber layer, um, and educational pathway follows that as well. So as I've cultivated knowledge educationally in those regards um, and applying them with analytics in those sectors, um, definitely draw different, a number of different conclusions um, as with regard to you know, space kind of touching all those different sectors and whatnot. Um, I guess just for example, just throwing one out there, Bluetooth, GPS, um, underwater cables, the, how space kind of interfaces with um, different like networks that may interface with that. Um, so yeah, just you got to keep it top level. That's pretty much, yeah. As Hector would say, the connective tissue between all of our different cells. That's a very good answer. Yeah, there's so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Lydia, same question to you. As our space systems are becoming more interconnected and reliant on technology, have you learned more about the intersection of cyber and space through your Space ISAC Fellowship Program? Um, absolutely. Um, that's been a significant focus throughout my experience in this fellowship program. Um, coming in, I could infer that they were connected. I just didn't understand how um, deeply and, and the extent of that connection was. Um, really, though, what I've come to realize is the intersection between the two kind of acts as like a double-edged sword. So while, yes, it does open up um, opportunities for advancement and technology, it also opens up you know, an equal number of doors for vulnerabilities. So there's like a fine line, I'd say, that, you know, they dance on between the two. All right, well, Xavier, you mentioned a little bit about collaborations. I heard you mention Proof Labs. Tell me a little bit more about some of the collaboration that you've had specifically with our, our Space ISAC community. Sure. Um, well, for starters, you know, I started at a good time, you know, um, early in the spring. So I was able to go to the Space Symposium, which I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with, but it was my first time. So um, having that headway, you know, in the industry, seeing what kind of projects and everything else that's out there was pretty mind opening for me. And also meeting new, all sorts of great people in that industry as well. Um, via our members, we've also had the privilege of, you know, being involved in tabletop exercises, um, local young professional organizations, so establishing network that way, which has been incredibly helpful. Um, met some awesome people there as well. And um, yeah, finally, most notably, just you know, shout out to Gretchen, her educational opportunities that she's been able to provide, you know, being involved in projects in that regard and hopefully trying to expand that for UCCS, you know, paving the way forward. That's 
few, few of the things I've been involved with. So thank you. Yes, I echo that. Shout out to Gretchen. She is amazing. Um, on to our next question, Lydia. I am really excited to know what are some of the key takeaways from your experience with us at Space ISAC so far? Um, for me, I'd have to say that the more that I, I learn, the more I realize that there's so much left to learn. Um, and me being a naturally curious person, it makes me excited to know that there is a lot that I don't know. Um, and I'd say another one would be that it's being in this field, and especially as an engineer, it's really easy to forget to, you know, kind of take your blinders off. I think you could relate to as an engineer, but um, everything should should be looked at from multiple perspectives. Challenge your perspective. Um, so that would be my my few takeaways. Amazing, yes, taking the blinders off. We get so stuck in our experience and having that fresh perspective is so important. Um, Xavier, I'm gonna ask you the same question. Coming from a mechanical engineering background, what are some of the key takeaways from your experience at Space ISAC so far? Sure, um, I mean, just echoing what Lydia said, I definitely agree. Um, it's definitely easy to take things at face value, but being open-minded to have that perspective and to dig a little deeper um, and just kind of make the deeper connections even though they might not be, you, it might not be perceived to be there, right? So um, just having the open mind to reach different conclusions and take the time to dig even though it may not appear to be so. So um, yeah, that's all I got. Well, while you're on that note, I'm gonna ask you, knowing that you're a student, so you're balancing our fellowship program and student life, um, what are some of the most challenging aspects of the fellowship program for you? Cool. Um, I mean, so being in Space ISAC, we get to interface with a lot of information, right? So, and it's something I'm somewhat new to, so um, it could be information overload at times, especially you know, the news um, could be some ne negative in some aspects as well. So, um, but it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's also an opportunity, you know, that we get to make an impact in those areas and g gain knowledge in those areas as well. So it's a privilege, you know, to be able to have access to all those data points and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's something I enjoy as well. So it's, it's a bit, bit of a catch-22 in that regard, but. Yes, information overload. Okay, so Lydia, Working at Periton now, um, what, are, what do you find challenging about being able to kind of balance that work life and being a part of the fellowship and your job has changed a little bit since you joined the fellowship? Tell us a little bit more about that. So I think, um, especially throughout my fellowship experience, um, one thing that I found is it's a little bit hard to kind of stay ahead of, you know, the threat actors that are popping up, it seems like every maybe 30 seconds these days, um, the ever-evolving threat landscape, it, it seems a little bit intimidating, or it is a little bit intimidating, but right. I think, yeah. <laughs> but I think that's also um, kind of a positive too, because it helps keep us engaged and it, and it keeps us eager. So, yeah. <laughs> Amazing, amazing answers. Um, so Xavier, I'm gonna ask you, I know we have a lot of students and young career professionals joining us virtually today. So what advice would you have for an aspiring cybersecurity professional? Um, I mean, quite frankly, you know, first thing that comes to mind is like, no Nike sponsorship here, but you just gotta do it, right? Just <laughs> jump out into it, jump out into the industry. Um, there's definitely a need there. We need more analysts and we need more people of multiple diverse backgrounds, you know, experience wise and whatnot. So um, yeah, I mean, threats don't stop and it's only the technical land or cyber landscapes only growing, right? So as that grows, the, land, the threats grow and it, it's always changing, right? And so we need more people to address that, especially as adversarial nations are trying to do the same, right? So um, yeah, just don't be afraid, jump into it and now's the time to do it, so. That's all I got. No Nike sponsorship, but just do it. I like that. <laughs> um, Lydia, same question to you. What advice would you have for aspiring cybersecurity professionals? 
I would have to echo what Xavier said, really. I mean, just dig in, you know. Um, never be scared to take on challenging projects. Just embrace the suck. Um, I was in the Marine Corps for eight years. That's Embracing the suck is kind of hardwired now into my head, but yeah, just go for it. I never had any type of space um, experience prior to this, but I just went for it and um, I just said yes to any opportunity that you know I came across to get hands-on experience and that's really what's helped me to kind of find my place here now. Well, I can certainly relate to that, having an English degree. Um, sometimes you have to figure out how to break down those barriers and get into that industry that you really like to get into. So I'm glad to see that you found ways to break down those barriers, not having a strong space background and getting into the cyber world. So I think that's great advice to our students and aspiring young professionals. Um, just go for it, and that's exactly right. Um, sometimes you just have to take that challenge, and sometimes it's gonna be hard, sometimes it might be easy, but you guys are proof here that going for it is worth it. Um, I love to see the trajectory that you both have established for yourselves and the impact that you guys have made on our fellowship program. So looking at the future now, uh, what do you envision as the most pressing cyber challenges and opportunities? And I say challenges and opportunities because I think you both have seen both sides of that coin. Well, for me, I'd have to say um, one of the challenges that is going to stay, I believe, in our radar for the foreseeable future is AI. Um, I mean, a few years ago, the average Joe Schmo didn't even know what that even was. And now they're learning so rapidly. But I think with that, they're threat actors, adversarial nations, you know, cyber criminals are, are learning just as fast, if not faster. But they're using it to exploit our, you know, our tools, our systems. Um, and with that, I think there's also a pro to it, too, where AI can also be used for good. Um, and there's a lot of positives that can come with it. It's just how it's used, really. OK, what about you, Xavier? Sure. Um, I mean, I definitely agree with Lydia as well. And just to kind of add a different aspect to it, I, um, I would Seeing the advancements being made in, with regard to like supply chain and semiconductors and whatnot, um, I think that's a major threat that faces us at the moment. Um, adversarial nation states, they're making headway in that regard and independently. So um, yeah, just being sure that we maintain a technological advantage while ensuring that they're secure and um, we do, do it so efficiently and effectively. Um, yeah, just, I mean, that only gets exacerbated with AI, right? So, <laughs> um, right, yeah, so that's all I got for that, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing insights from the both of you, and I hope you know it's just been so incredible to see you grow over these past several months, and even just the insights that you had in answering that question is just proof of what you've learned and the way that you've applied yourselves, and I'm just so incredibly proud. Um, so I will ask our last question here as we close out our discussion today um, and look forward to the future. What do you plan to do after the fellows program? And we can start with Lydia. So for me, I think I will continue, um, you know, my current pursuit as a orbital systems engineer, I found a really happy home in you know, the space cyber field. Um, I don't think I'll really pursue anything else because I really enjoy what I'm doing right now, <laughs> but keep working to advance and, um, and learn more every day. And honestly, I give so much credit to the Space ISAC Fellowship Program because it's really acted as a springboard to help me launch my career. I can't say thank you enough, um, but yeah, definitely huge round of applause. Oh, sure. Um, so for me, I mean, I feel like the world's my oyster at this moment. So <laughs> um, I'm definitely, like I said, remain open, can 
quite say that before. You know, I thought I was going to be doing engineering and um, stick with that. But yes, yeah, kind of adopting the rule I mentioned earlier, just staying open, keeping my options open, um, and just hoping to be able to bridge the gap, be one to, you know, secure our infrastructure and make it productive impact and be sure my work's effective and whatnot. So um, beneficial. So um, yeah, just keeping an open mind and hoping for the best in the future and just kind of growing my technical knowledge in the meantime and just, yeah, just open to whatever the world has to offer at this moment. And again, like Lydia said, can credit Space Lifeside for that. So thank you. Well, I will have to say then our job is done here because I love to hear that you are um, open to explore new opportunities, um, kind of changing your mindset from the mechanical engineering background and seeing the opportunities. And same with you, Lydia, just knowing that we have springboarded your career, um, opening up new opportunities for you. That is the purpose of this fellowship program is to give you that hands-on operational experience open you up to these opportunities to meet our members, meet our partners. Um, you know, with the fellowship program and our membership program, our members have an opportunity to have a fellow sit on our watch floor. And many of our members are taking advantage of those opportunities. Um, and you guys are great examples to bring up to the stage today to give the audience just an idea of some of the experiences that you've had. I think this is a, a unique opportunity to work in an unclassified watch center environment. Um, I, I can't really think of too many opportunities like that for students. I know that my career probably would have changed significantly had I had some of these opportunities. And quite frankly, some of them may have been there and I didn't know about them. Um, so I, I love to hear that you guys have embraced that and embraced the opportunity and hope that there are many out there in the audience that consider sending an analyst, giving them that experience that we have highlighted here today. Uh, so thank you all for bearing with us for the last session of the day. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys have found some valuable insights from our fellows um, and of course for the overall Voss programming today. Um, but it was our pleasure and honor to be up on the stage and give you a little bit of insight into our fellowship program today. So with that, uh, we're going to close out our session and hand, hand it back over to our executive director, Ms. Erin Miller. Thank you all so much.